Ross McIntyre. And Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Ross McIntyre. And Alan, I seen that. This is our, is it our third? Our fourth? Third? Third? I'm not- I think it's third. I see. We did Arrow, and then we did another one. Su- Suicide, Suicide Squad. Squad. Ah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, my mind just okay. blinked. I started started uh, going through nitpicks episodes, and those. How guys. could you forget about Suicide Squad? <laughs> <laughs> Best uh, movie. But yeah, so now I think we've been going on a consistent downward spiral from Arrow to Suicide Squad to God's Not Dead. Yes. Seems to be and, in line. And the comic book thing we're really keeping consistent too, which yeah. is good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this was actually based on the comic. This is a DC property, wasn't it? I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> it feels like a Warner Brothers adaptation. It, it feels just like a DC movie, quality wise, <laughs> script wise, character wise. So this is actually the first time I've seen this movie. Really? It's yeah. first time for me too as well, actually. I've, I've heard a lot about it. I've seen a lot of sort of reviews online talking about it, but I've never sat down and watched the whole thing from start to finish. And, um, well, I did. <laughs> and now, here we are. <laughs> yeah. I, was- I, I remember when it came out. Um, so I, I'm a Christian and so a lot of people on Facebook and stuff like that, they really liked it and it, a lot of okay. stuff was going on about it. Uh, I never watched it. I'm not really into Christian media. It's all pretty consistently terrible. Uh, that's true and fair. <laughs> and, uh, so I never watched it, but I, I thought it was good. I thought it, it was supposed to put forward arguments, like decent arguments. There's mm-hmm. zero arguments throughout this entire yeah. movie. There's, There's one. A lot of, str- arguments. Oh, a lot right. of just arguments. That just exist to to have no com- conflict, just just to present Christianity as like the end all be all, yeah. good wonderful thing, and it's it's weird. I'm I'm not uh, religious at all, yeah. So it's not, and I'm past my twelve year old edgy atheist phase. I'm past my Ricky Gervais phase. So it's not so like I was I was sitting back like insulted. I was just kind of bored and and amazed. I was just kind of amazed at how blatant it was. Yeah. Well, I like, was insulted. No, like, I was, I was so <laughs> insulted by this movie from just the <laughs> idea that they would put forward that these, that Christians are attacked in any form like this. Like this is always, the least accurate. Me as a- hmm. Sorry, go ahead. It's always struck me as kind of a weird victim mentality to adopt because uh, I don't know statistics. I'm pretty sure it's a majority in America. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that, you know, obviously there have been conflicts of faith on university campuses, but I, I don't, it, 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 the problem is not it's based on, the problem is how the movie presents everything, yeah. which is very unrealistic, extremely exaggerated. And I mean, just the, the way the professor is written it's like so, so obviously meant to like enrage you yeah. as like a Christian, as a young Christian viewer. Yeah, this is this is an echo chamber movie, right? It's put out yeah. for like, or it's sold kind of like, oh, this is going to change people's minds, but it, it's mm-hmm. not. It's it's intended to make you feel you, not you specifically, you as a Christian, right? As the audience, mm-hmm. it's it's intended to make you feel attacked and shelt like to pull back and just get with your own people, like, oh, we have to help each other and protect each other and, you know, stay safe. Like there's no, there's no intention of changing anyone's mind. One of the most egregious things I think this movie does is in his first, uh, when he's first giving his points to the class, they cut away and come back and he says, and so all that points to the clear evidence that God exists. I was like, you didn't say really? anything. <laughs> yeah. Which was great. I, I really liked that. I really liked actually just on a, just on a, a technical level. Um, those slides really professionally done. I yeah. don't know. He <laughs> been committing a lot of time in like after effects doing those slides. PowerPoint doesn't have that kind of effects. How is he making those? Yeah. 
Well, that was, that seemed like to be the most effort in the entire movie. Yeah. Now I know why it was sucking up so much time. Because you just, <laughs> just make all these little animations and everything. I oh, just, man. It's, it's fascinating. So <laughs> it's I kind get, of fascinating. Let's, uh, what, what would you say the, the plot of this movie is? Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> the plot is a young Christian man is going to university. His name is, okay, by the way, here we go. First, his name is Josh Wheaton. Yeah. Josh Wheaton. Yes. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Just, it, I mean, if you don't catch what it's a, clearly referencing, um, interesting but it's just stoven I, spielberg I yes ah <laughs> this is my friend <laughs> stefan spielberg it's such a such a bizarre choice and i i just that 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 really threw me off because yeah. i i forgot his name was josh Wheaton, and i was like, <laughs> like I, anyway so he he enrolls in uh he he's here's here here's here here at university for pre-law and he's enrolled in an elective which is philosophy only the professor is an atheist oh no so uh <laughs> even the professor even the guy helping him enroll was like oh you're gonna yeah. want to change your class like i, I guess it was in philosophy because i don't have much working knowledge of what every staff maybe it's a small university of what like every staff member in my university is like in class but just like the sight of the cross is never having to be like oh you're screwed <laughs> like, there's that like maybe he's well that maybe also not, is another yeah. another thing that this movie does is that it puts forward that just wearing a cross is a i a, a, like a a noble thing like a do you know what I mean? Like, oh, you're clearly communicating yeah, everything yes. you believe by just wearing this cross, which is not true. Like, it's just... I didn't really get that. I mean, I guess... I mean, everything in this movie is so blatant. That might have been what they were going for. Yeah. Like, there's no... <laughs> down to the, the the professor when he's introduced, listing off all the, all the great thinkers through time and then saying... I, I knew exactly what the board was going to say and then flipping the board around. They're all... Atheist. It's just, <laughs> I, I, I imagine if I was in a theater full of like this movie's intended audience, I just hear <gasps> everywhere. <laughs> That's like your big gasp moment. Oh my god, atheists! No, get out of there, Josh. You gotta run. <laughs> so, the professor then says, which you know what? This is not the most ridiculous thing I've heard a professor do. Is write down on this paper. Because I don't want to discuss religion at all across this semester, write down God is dead and sign it. I don't think that's an entirely ridiculous thing to ask. Maybe a little insensitive to people's belief. And yeah, as a professor, you should be. But as Josh Wheaton's mind, one semester for this elective course, he can't just like just do it for the class, man. Just do it for the grade. It's so easy. Especially because so much is on the line. Yeah, yeah. I think the teacher, I think it, it's an interesting idea of him being like, you know what? Let's just all get on the same page. This is, so what yeah. I'm teaching is from this perspective. Let's all agree that yeah. God is dead and we'll, we can just move forward and we don't have to spend a bunch of time of me convincing you. And then when Josh that's Wheaton, what I, uh, that's what I dis saw it. yeah, when he disagrees, the teacher says, just, okay, I'll give you 20 minutes in three different <laughs> classes to make a, a case <laughs> why like the God's real. like that is on the teacher side of things that is so much effort to be yeah. considerate towards his idea he's like i don't want to spend a bunch of time on this but if you're really gonna fight me on this go ahead here's your chance say what you have to say that's an hour of class that he's dedicating towards this thing that he thinks is ridiculous that's He's yeah. he's presented as this unreasonable person. That seems well, I, extremely his reasonable. Character, his character is so weird cuz he starts out and and as they were going along I was I was wondering if the movie was going to go in a direction where at the end he was going to like thank Josh and be like this was all part of a test. I was Christian the whole time. Like I thought that's where it was going. I okay. thought they were going to say like I thought they were going to say, and and now, or he was going to be an atheist and say like, I remember why I loved God. Do something 
something cheesy like that. Yeah. Uh, it was what they did was actually much worse. Oh yeah, this <laughs> and, and crazier. The ending of this movie had me screaming. <laughs> it's I, I didn't insane. know. I didn't know what was happening. So, so Josh refuses this very simple request, and he agrees to do this. Then we meet Josh's girlfriend, who is a demon, a <laughs> <the> monster, <laughs> which the worst person. Which the one thing I do like about her character is she's a Christian in this movie. But is portrayed as a bad person. The only yeah, one. Yeah, I mean that was that was crazy. Because everyone else, everyone else who's a Christian is perfect. Their lives are good, even though they have these outside influences that are difficult. Everything about them interpersonally is great, and everyone and who's everyone, an atheist is yeah. got cancer and is you know struggling and having all this stuff happen to them. So at well, least. Man. Yeah, yeah, businessman. I, I like the introduction. I like the introduction of the businessman because he just he turns around and uh, he says like, "There's a merger coming. They don't care about insider trading, something like that." I'm like, yeah, just China. saying business terms in a row. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's I I I found it kind of interesting that like they they had all the characters be linked in that way, but it it felt like a couple of them were kind of forced. <laughs> they oh, didn't know yeah. how to link. A, like the professor dating the businessman's sister, and he's like, "We started dating right after you were in my class." I'm like, "I guess that works. That kind of makes sense." But yeah, the 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 relationships between atheists and Christians in this movie don't make any sense. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, I don't understand how the professor's girlfriend stuck with him because he treats her like garbage. Oh yeah, every and time. and you would assume that's not the first time. Like you, that's not like uh, an accident that you stumble into where you just are a jerk like that to your girlfriend. Like that, that would be consistently throughout their relationship. Yeah, and especially because she's so much younger, and they have this huge religious divide. How like I didn't catch it said how long they'd been together, but it seemed like a while because I, yeah. I didn't know if they were living together or what. But I just, it just seems so bizarre like why how do these people connect on any level and this is with uh josh and his girlfriend well she has the wonderful line uh which was just so subtly written where she turns to him and says i was the valedictorian and i'm at my sixth choice school or whatever yeah, why am i doing I it because i have the next 60 years of our lives planned and i'm like well that's a whole barrel of crazy right there uh <laughs> yeah absolutely uh not yeah you you should you should have gone to your first choice school. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I kind of I mean she's a terrible person in a way because she's kind of crazy. Yeah, but I also kind of felt bad for her because the, she she asks this guy to do one thing, which I, I'm I was kind of on her side. Yeah, it's a very reasonable thing to just do it for the class. But Josh just loves God so much he can't bear to even write it down on a piece of paper. And then the Duck Dynasty people show oh, up. Oh yeah, that was bad. <laughs> that that shocked me because i also forgot that was in the movie (laughs) so when i I don't know their names off the top of my head so when 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 she's talking to the businessman the the reporter the blog woman yes she says the cancer Cancer blogger yeah (laughs) let's call it cancer lady that's respectful (laughs) (laughs) whatever she's not a character she doesn't have a name who cares (laughs) and uh so when Cancer Lady says like, "Oh, I have, I'm gonna ambush Willie Robertson," I'm like, uh, "I don't," or someone, I'm like, "I don't know who yeah. that is." And then he gets out of the car. I was like, "Whoa, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute, where are we?" Also, was it outside of church that she did this? Was, yeah, I think it was outside of a church. This seems highly inappropriate way to be a journalist. I don't know, like to run up on someone and be like, "What are you? Why are you killing animals?" I'm like, well, we're, they took it really, they took it really well. It. They dealt with it very professionally. Like, good on them. Yeah, it's but, it's super easy understand. when you already have all the answers ready to go. I didn't really understand. Her. I didn't really understand her setup because she was talking about how she was getting independent advertisers and like really getting a lot of attention. She runs like a text only blog based on audio she records on her phone. Like, yeah. get a camera. You, you, I thought she'd have a camera person with. Her. I thought she was going to have like her own TMZ kind of thing. She just writes it all up later. <laughs> Well, she doesn't even, <laughs> she doesn't even ask anything of value. Like, no, just, do you, do you kill animals? Yes. Yeah. Why? Okay. Why do you think that's okay? And it's like, well, that's, I mean, we eat them. Like, yeah. You know, like, and, what do you mean? <laughs> and then at the end, he just kind of mentions God. <laughs> like, it's like, oh yeah, also God. <laughs> it's, that's the thing. It's like, this movie could have been, 
I guess I don't know what else it could have been about, but God is is somehow at the forefront and at the back of every conversation. Yeah. And yeah, even even when things I the I mean the the cameos like that and by the the band at the end who I assume some people know who they are felt beyond forced. And but it's it's just a matter of what 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 are they going for? Like what is what is the purpose of this movie beyond weird reinforcement propaganda that, well, that's exactly, not, yeah. I mean, that's it's exactly like internalized what propaganda. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Cause well, it, it seems to imply that if you, if you watch a freshman, if you come over from a foreign country, even, and you seemingly your first exposure to religion, you watch a freshman give an hour's worth of lecturing about God, you'll just convert. Yeah. <laughs> Cause that's what the, that's what the Chinese kid does. Well, I, yeah, that, that made me crazy too, because they put it forward like that his dad didn't want to talk to him was kind of a, uh, uh, an attack against him, like his freedom to believe, except they don't really have freedom right. to believe in China like that. Like he's yeah, like, you so are, I, you, I guess you can't talk about this over the phone. What are you yeah. doing? Why are you doing that? That's all reasonable. Yeah. yeah. That, that makes I was complete honestly surprised. sense. Yeah, I was surprised at that level of like realistic representation considering there were no Jewish or gay people in this movie. <laughs> Which I expected. I ex- I expected there to be someone who would come out as gay and then be like, well, you know, Jesus still loves you or have a gay person be a villain. Those were the two ways it was going to go. But they just pretended, pretended they didn't exist, which was better. And yeah. um, then, they had, then they had the Muslim family, which was interestingly portrayed. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a secret, yeah. Having the daughter be a secret Christian. Yeah, this is. I don't know how often that. This, I mean, it, her character arc was kind of just getting beat up. Like she didn't really. I didn't. I. I. That honestly, it would have been more interesting just to follow her. Yeah, she would have. She like, had the that, most compelling journey. story throughout this movie, Absolutely. and they only spent maybe she, two she has minutes. The smallest part. Yeah. The. Uh, yeah. The scene with her and her iPhone and her brother is the most contrived scene I could imagine. There's yeah. zero motivation for the brother to stop playing his video game, sneak into and her walk, room, walk in her and room. pick up her iPhone to see what she's doing. While Who's she, she's listening to? <laughs> like, what? Who cares? Also, no siblings ever care. Why don't you close the, the screen? Like... Anytime I listen to something, I always turn the power button off, so I'm not wasting battery just illuminating okay. nothing. Like it is just. Or if it's that much of a secret, don't fall asleep and leave it open, because <laughs> your dad could wander in and just see that sitting there, yeah. or be like, "What are you listening to?" and put it in, and then it's just it, it, the movie. It's like it, it it feels like a first draft in many ways, with yeah. lines like, with lines like, "I'm the valedictorian, but I'm still here with you." It's like, it's like it's like they wrote down bullet points for the characters and then made that the dialogue. Yeah, well, I think what they did like, was they wrote down what do we want to say? What like what's our response? Now we have right. to make a motivation for someone to elicit that response, but they put in so little effort to naturally get there. They're just like, oh, we'll, we'll just make it work. We'll just like make this happen type of thing. Uh, the response to this incident is the only thing that's important. So we'll just ham fist everything else and let it go. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to get back on the line of like explaining the plot, but there, there's like, there's a through line, which is Josh Wheaton, mm-hmm. my favorite named character, <laughs> but there's also, there's just, it's like the amazing Spider-Man too. There's just, there's not really a plot. There's just kind of 50 subplots yeah. and they all go, on, they connect later on. And it all comes together into a big concert, which was its own special flavor of cringe. But I, I guess I wasn't, I, I didn't expect to get anything out of this movie. I didn't expect to like, I, I laughed a few times. I laughed at the scene where a uh, cancer lady broke down crying because she was doing such a bad job of <laughs> I'm just going to take that out of context and... Absolutely. <laughs> You're going to ruin me, Alex. <laughs> I'm going to get kicked out of my school for saying that. But anyway, yeah, just because because she's 
it's something you you notice in movies a lot is that they're not actually crying they're just squinting their eyes up and screaming and just her 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 tantrum she throws where she like punches her desk and throws her papers around it was just it was really weirdly done and i was just kind of laughing at her and i felt bad well, like i should really feel for you right now but or what about when she tells her boyfriend superman oh <laughs> that she even has cancer <laughs> this couldn't have waited till tomorrow <laughs> That's my favorite line in the movie. I burst out laughing. Oh, you know he's an atheist now. <laughs> oh, man. It's like, okay, so the end of this movie, I'm going to spoil it because... You know. let's, jump, let's jump to it. It's, it's old. This is an old movie, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. When uh, 2014. 20... Oh, wow. That's actually sooner than I thought. I thought it was yeah. like 2012, 10. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah, so I told you they're making the third one. This is like yeah. the Saw franchise. This... This this is the well this is the flagship for Pure Flix. Yeah. They've made a bunch of other stuff. Um, I, haven't, I haven't seen any. I don't, of it. I don't know that they've ever been good. I saw a trailer for like a post apocalyptic Christian movie one. I'm like, I kind of nice. want to watch that. It looks like God's Not Dead and Mad Max kind of smushed together. And like, that's <laughs> that sounds like combo. the best movie I could imagine. What a lovely day to worship God. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, Kevin Sorbo ends up getting hit by a car at the end uh was that car do you think that car was originally supposed to be dean kane because dean kane goes and visits his mom who's sick. wait that was dean kane yeah yeah the, the businessman okay yeah okay i thought he looked familiar so okay d- that makes sense dean kane visits his mom and his mom's got dementia and she has this moment of uh, lucidity is that a word is that what i'm yep and she like just preaches at him essentially and it's like who are you and then he leaves that, but they do it out of order yeah. and i i wondered i was like oh i wonder that, if that was supposed to be dean kane who hit kevin sorbo because uh, yeah i thought it was going to be it seemed like it was leading to that yeah but they never then he could come out and find god <laughs> so they could make everyone a christian at the end which is <laughs> and that that also the scene with the mother was weird too when yeah. uh he because he kind of has this this monologue that actually was the only time in the movie that i actually kind of got a character which was him saying like you know i have the perfect life yeah and but you're like the loveliest person i know and like you prayed every day and i'm like okay that's actually kind of interesting that's that's an interesting perspective and then this crazy old bat says uh this crazy old bat says like oh well sometimes satan gives people everything so they don't turn to god and i was like no you ruined it <laughs> you had something and you ruined it That's, you had you had something you had some nuance and you couldn't you couldn't have that could you yeah but there's no resolution for dean kane or no. for the the father or because they all get their uh their special little texts at the end and they just throw their phones to the side and drive away yeah <laughs> so yeah, then nothing happens with the dad or Dean Kane. Dean Kane's story doesn't type. That's why I was thinking he must have been the one who hit him, but they just were like, oh, maybe that's too much against the atheists. <laughs> I don't think that we was already, ever. We gave him cancer. <laughs> we gave him cancer. I don't think the words, this is too much, were ever said. <laughs> <laughs> that oh. seems like a phrase that was unfamiliar to the filmmakers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, so Josh Wheaton, he does his three, his three lectures or whatever. I don't know what you would call that. Presentations, I guess. Presentations to the class. And the first one, he, he gives all the evidence, but they don't show any because they're just insecure about the points they're making, I think. Uh, yes. I think they're, they were afraid to make a point or they don't have solid points to make. I don't, I don't, I didn't really understand that. I was like, okay, this whole movie, the idea of your movie is let's present a case for God existing. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. P- do that. If you want to do yeah. that, you need to do that. Like if that's the premise, you have Fair to do it. Up. You can't, you can't just say like, oh yeah, we already covered all that. You just didn't see it. It was like, wait, no, no, what? <laughs> like, yeah, it's, they, they jump over weird details like that. And like, well, again, with the, um, the Muslim girl, like she, what what happens to her at the end? Because she has no home and no family. All of a sudden, how is she going to pay her tuition? How is she going to? She's not. Where's she going to live? <laughs> like, yeah. There's so many. And then she just talks to Josh in the in the in the in the concert. At the concert, yeah. <laughs> it's just like 
oh, okay, are you two going to get together now? <laughs> that, yeah, that's God's what it seemed like, right? To find out. I think we have to watch God's Not Dead 2 to find out, Alan. I think <laughs> so. That's, that's the next one. <laughs> I, I and don't then want number to, three, but I want to know. And then number four next year. Oh, God. <laughs> this, is, this is your life now, Ross. Oh, man. I I mean... I'm just gonna be religious by the time we're done with these. That's the plan. I'm just gonna. It's this. These movies just like slow Stockholm syndrome. I'm just gonna be a Christian <laughs> by the time we're done with three. I'm just like, you know what? I'm tired of fighting. I'm just gonna embrace this. <laughs> I'm gonna convert my YouTube channel into just a Christian YouTube channel. There you go. Just breaking down Kurt Cameron movies. Oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> um. But yeah, no, so the, the interactions people have, right? I, I really noticed it in the concert when the Muslim girl or the not Muslim girl is talking to Josh and she's like, Hey, you're, you're the kid that the teacher had a problem with, right? And he's like, yeah. She's like, yeah, I knew because you said this thing. He's like, cool. And then just turns around. Turns around. <laughs> like there's, well, bye, I guess. <laughs> yeah. That's the whole... You weirdo. <laughs> This whole. Yeah, it's just a stranger. Every well, there, there was a yeah, there was that really bizarre scene earlier too when she was putting on her um I don't know if it was a hijab the I don't want to use the wrong term but when she's putting on her uh, head covering her face her head covering um and that random girl walks up behind her and says you're beautiful I wish you didn't have to do that yeah. I'm like, who are you yeah. <laughs> who are you to walk up to someone and say that's a terrible thing to say to someone yeah. Like, well, it's like, j- not even someone you know, just like or someone you don't know. That's just a like what a bizarrely terrible thing to say to someone. It's it's all these bad versions of Christianity that this movie is putting forward. These like yeah. ignorant people who are not in the real world is what mm-hmm. this movie is like. This is what being a Christian life is, and it's like. Oh no, you guys are super wrong. Like, if you read the Bible and you see Jesus' life, the people who persecuted him is essentially who would be the church now. Like, the okay. people who attacked him and were against him and fighting him all the time would essentially be the church leaders of, of that time. And hmm. society, the atheists, the people who disagreed with him are the ones who accepted him and like, respected him and gave him time to talk and listen to him. And this, okay. this, this movie is like doing the opposite of what the story is. They're like, Oh no, Atheist. we're good. Atheists are bad. And it's like, no, no, no. You, you're getting a little confused here, guys. Like your self-righteousness is the problem. Yeah. It's, it's condescending and it's, it's self-righteous and it's, it's pretty reductive. Because I, like you said, you were insulted by this as a Christian, and I yeah. think most of the Christians I know are very intelligent people, and they'd probably be insulted by this. Maybe they'd enjoy this, but I, I would hope that they would be able to see this is just pandering garbage. Like this isn't—I don't find this insulting as an atheist. Like this is going to corrupt kids' brains, and we got to stop religion. I'm just—it's just a boring movie that you can't get much out of unless you're so, so religiously focused that it's that this seems like just a celebration of everything you believe in. And if this is everything you believe in, if, if everything in your life is so focused on this one thing, then this just, it's kind of, it's not sad. It's just kind of, I guess, a waste of time. Yeah. <laughs> I guess yeah, in my mind, this, that's, this movie, that's not correct. It's just, uh, whatever. Th- this it's mo- complicated. <laughs> this movie is, this is a complicated. This is a bag. Of, this is a pit of snakes. I'm wandering <laughs> through right now. I'm trying to say a stupid thing. <laughs> This movie is made for people willing to argue on Facebook. Yeah. You know, I guess, I, well, I mean, it, it's, it's proven kind of in its final moments with the whole send a text to everyone, you know, thing. Yeah. Like it's, I mean, there, there that's not the way to do this. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> so, you don't, you don't assault people with your ideology unprompted. That's just the only thing that's going to do is alienate people from your ideology. Yeah. It, it entrenches it. them. If they're against you, it only makes them more against you. You know, like if you're willing to, yeah. to be kind of aggressively whatever, if it's religious or political or any, any stance, if you're willing yeah. to take a, a, an aggressive stance like this is true. And if you don't believe you're wrong, 
all that does is make them want to fight you or, you know, retreat to their ideology partners. And it just, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not a conversation. It doesn't produce anything fruitful. It's not even, yeah, this movie, the problem with this movie isn't the Christianity thing. It's just the, the radicalization thing. It's, if this movie was about atheists trying to prove how dumb Christians are, it'd be just as pathetic. (laughs) If it was about Jewish people trying to convince everyone how wrong Christian people are, it'd be just as pathetic. Well, I don't even, I don't even know if I would call this movie Christian in the sense of, this is like a, you could, you could replace that and just say spiritual. That whole idea of like, oh, God is, you know, so good and this is what he wants me to do. Like that's, I feel like that's all they really ever say throughout this movie. I also feel like the things that God wants them to do are kind of screwed up. (laughs) (laughs) Because especially the priest at the end who's, who's complaining the whole time that he doesn't, he doesn't do anything religious that's exciting, which I mean, I guess if you're a, a priest, I don't know what classifies as exciting in religious terms, but um, I, I would think that watching a man die and on his deathbed kind of forcing him to be a Christian in his final moments, and then you and your friend go in, this was a good day. Yeah. It's kind of screwed up. Yeah. <laughs> that was my problem, really. I was like, okay, that's kind of interesting, and it seemed like Kevin Sorbo's whole arc was like becoming a Christian again. Mm-hmm. I thought he was going to reunite with his girlfriend and well, I mean, I thought he was going to be turned into a Christian by the presentation. Then I was like, okay, maybe he's going to reunite with the girlfriend and then like enjoy the concert and then be like, you know what? Maybe we don't agree, but I'm, I'm willing to listen. But no, he gets murdered, uh, by a random, <laughs> it could have been Dean Kane before, but just by a, a faceless car. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's his, that's his reward for, uh, not believing in God enough, I guess. Yeah. Is, is, it, Death and loneliness. That's yeah, what so every atheist gets in this movie. All the Death Christians end up with what they want at the end of this movie. Yeah. Everyone, all the Christians end up good. All the atheists, uh, so the cancer girl converts and Kevin Sorbo converts, but she still has cancer. He just got ran over by a car. Dean Kane, I don't feel like his, his story ever finished. And the Muslim father, was just a device. He wasn't even a character. He he was okay, just. I know a little bit about. I know a little bit about uh, God's not dead too. Would you like me to spoil oh, it for you? Yes, please. Her cancer is cured in the second one. Oh, nice. And they they strongly imply it was God who did yeah. it. <laughs> From what I remember, the they she calls like the lead singer of the band. He's like, "That's amazing. See, God's work is powerful." Like, what about the chemotherapy? <laughs> Maybe he should thank the doctors more. <laughs> it's like. That's the sort of thing where with this movie. It's like don't ascribe everything to God. There's 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 there's, there's, well, so there's like, some delegation. I think like this is this is gonna be a weird comparison, but I think it'll make sense once I get to it. It's a similar okay. issue I have with Captain America or Wonder Woman, where they're putting superheroes in an event that actually happened and giving them credit. So like them fighting in World War II where actual people happened is like, I would much rather hear the true story of that, not a fictional story of an actual event. And so if there's a, if there's a story about someone who has cancer and, you know, they, they're cured of cancer either through prayer or through chemotherapy or something like that, that's amazing. That's, that's what I would like to hear. I don't need to hear about a fictional character like that. That's not proof of anything. That's not proof of God healing them or proof of, the chemotherapy healing them like that's that's just an idea and using that as leverage of like oh this you should believe this thing because this happens in this fake world is good Mm -hmm. does that make sense i don't know if that kind of it's a little what you're saying is a little jumbled in my head but i i I think the fundamental problem with the whole prove god is real narrative from Mm -hmm. an atheist perspective or a christian perspective is that the point of God isn't scientific proof. Yeah. It's like, it's faith. I'm, I, like, I, like I said, I'm not religious, but even I know that yeah. the people don't believe in God because they, they know it for a fact. It's because they, they want to believe and that's just an aspect of someone's life. You can't, you can't change that or that can be changed. Like science, scientific fact can influence a person to a certain extent. Maybe a person doesn't believe in God because there's no scientific proof. That's their reasoning. Yeah. But you know, the, the separation between faith and fact is 
it has to be drawn and to it, yeah th- th- so this movie just presents the, the main atheist antagonist as being like well you got to prove it's real or otherwise it's wrong and then later it turns out what he was a christian the whole time <laughs> like that was <laughs> yeah. that was cuz i like that was how i pitched like i was breaking it down to my roommate after and i was like yeah then the craziest part is it turns out he was a christian the whole time <laughs> and yeah you know but yeah they yeah, do like, they do a terrible job at representing an atheist in this movie and his trauma, his trauma turning away from religion, that's, I think, a completely understandable motivation. Yeah. I think but his turnaround is, there, there's no turnaround. There's no proper resolution to his character because he just accepts God because he has no real other option. I think he just does it because why not? Because he's dying at the end. Yeah, yeah. Might as well, right? Like it's, yeah, you, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> like if he, cares if he was right before, then it doesn't matter. And then if they were right, then. He got in under the wire. Like, that's kind of what the movie is, you know, showing. But uh, this movie, the the idea of... So, uh, I I think a lot of Christians have that perspective of that people are only atheists because they had a bad experience with church or in life or something that made them angry at God. They really believe in God, but they're just angry with something. And if you can tap into what they're... Yeah, if you can tap into that and you can heal that bitterness then they'll come back to God. And I think it does a real disservice to people's intellect, people's ability to think for themselves, because that's not that. Yeah. Okay. So maybe if you never had that bitterness happen, you would still consider yourself a Christian or whatever religion, but you're in a cult at that point. That's not, that's not what Christianity or religion is intended to be. If your life is perfect throughout, there's no, Obviously, there would be no reason for you to question, like, oh, is this true or not? Like, you'd be, you know, like in Scientology, Tom Cruise is a Scientologist because everything is given to him, right? Like, yeah. And so the idea, and I'm, I'm doing a terrible job of explaining my, my idea here, but <laughs> I'm no expert <clears throat> either. <laughs> the, the whole idea is kind of lost. <laughs> <laughs> the whole idea of saying that. People are only atheists because of something bad happened to them. Those people's idea of religion is just a cult that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's too hyper focused and it's, it's the, it's not the same thing as saying like there, there is no darkness, only the absence of light as saying that there's, there's only the absence of God. Like no, there, some people just don't have the same belief system. I'm not, I'm not, uh, atheistic because. I have any sort of deep trauma. I wasn't raised that way and it never particularly interested me. <laughs> so yeah. that, that's it. Yeah. And I, and I think the other thing too, like with atheism is that that's also somewhat based on a belief or a faith, a system of faith, believing that, mm-hmm. you know, the science is correct. Like everything that is built on science is coming from the idea of like, Oh, we, we understand this basic principle of, let's say math, right? Like Mm. everything is built off of that. Well, if that's not accurate, then that can easily be wrong as well. Everything is, you know, dictated or the ideas are built on top of this idea, but it's all, it all requires some level of faith to accept that. Oh, we, we are right about this fundamental fact. Does that make sense? See the filmmakers, these thoughts have never entered their minds. Oh yeah, no, no, no. I, I, the fact of the matter is, yeah, like I, I'm just trying to think, like contextualizing this, this conversation with the movie. There's just there's there was no thought put into it. It was just, no. yeah. God will give everyone the answers they need. Yes, and that's just lazy storytelling. So yeah. like if like ignoring the religious angle, this is just a poorly told story. Yeah, no, yeah, a hundred percent. This movie, yeah. I was actually kind of surprised because I went on a couple forums and like on Reddit and stuff. Mm. And a lot of the Christians were saying like, cause the third one with the third one coming out, they're like, why everyone agrees this is bad. Christians think it's bad. Atheists think it's bad. Nobody likes these movies. Who are they making them for? But somehow they cost, uh, they cost two million a pop and they make like 20. Yeah. <laughs> That's why. Yeah. Essentially. That's why. They, they're really cheap to make. Yeah. This one made, uh, this first one made 60 million off 2 million, I believe. Wow. And the second one made, second one made 20 million off 2 million, I think. So they're, they're getting a return on their investment. Yeah. 
It's why not continue the story? Why not use the brand? There's people will go see it because there are people who will go like see it ironically too. Because nobody seems to understand that if you don't want to support a movie's official release, uh, seeing it ironically does like doesn't help your position. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just buy a ticket and go because like as a joke, yeah. you just wait till it comes out on DVD or something, then watch it. Yeah, get it on a red box. That's what I'm doing with Pacific Rim too, man. I'm not I'm not paying to see that. Oh, that looks terrible. I have no interest in Pacific Rim 2. I'll wait for it. I have no interest in God's Not Dead 3. I'm not going to go see it in theaters. Don't lie. It's coming out in two days. I know you're going. You're going to go and cosplay as Joss Wheaton. <laughs> what would I even wear a cross? I need, I, need, I need a cross. I need longer hair. I need to get contacts. I need to grow and lose some weight. Um, you got to be committed. Out, that kid was on a Disney show I used to watch. That's what weirded me out. Yeah, so that the, that's one of the things about this movie is the lighting feels just like a Disney movie. Or a Disney it feels TV very, show. It feels very made for TV. Yeah. Like I, I it feels like a lifetime like a Hallmark production. Yeah, cuz the only everyone is so lit unless you're not a Christian. Which I thought was no, it's a, so lit, dude. A, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I thought that's what you're saying. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> We're the cool church. Yeah, yeah, man. You know, That's you know how it is, fam. Oh, you know, fam, dab. <laughs> no, I mean, oh, like, so, <laughs> so, so brightly lit. Uh, unless you're not a Christian, it, all the atheists are like somewhat lit in shadows, or you know, yes. like it. There's a little more, more washed out. Yeah. Slightly, not not a ton, but slightly enough to I think sublim- subliminally mess with people's heads. I just I got it. <laughs> I mean, overtly, the exposition is just beating you over the head with it, but the the lighting is also oh, it's this movie. Yeah. This this is really really bad. It's very frustrating to watch. I think I I would be curious to know who actually enjoys these movies. I, there's gotta be some people. Yeah. I think. Cause I, not everyone's going to see some me, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, I think it's people who are not willing to think about what they're watching. You know, like the idea of like, oh, the reinforcing the idea that you are correct in your belief. And that's all they want. They don't care about story. They don't yeah. care about, you know, considering another perspective. They don't care about thinking in general they just want to be told you know what your thoughts are right and you know this these attacks that you feel are accurate those are authentic attacks which are both are just poor a poor way to live like to feel like everyone is attacking you if they disagree with you is really bad because then you don't ever think you don't ever consider how to 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 think about things or why you believe something yourself. And the, I think that's what this movie comes down to is people are not really sure why they believe what they believe. So they want to be reinforced that they're correct. These movies are kind of like the Transformers movies of religion. Yeah. There's not much substance. They just exist to give you like, if if you're going to see Transformers for robots punching, that's what you're going to get. If you're going to these movies to get a lot of worshiping and praising of God, that's what you're going to get. Like it, the, you you know what you're walking into, I guess. Yeah, this is I, there's, there's nothing beyond that. There's there's the illusion of it being a movie and something beyond that, but it's just an excuse for robots punching each other or talking about God. It's yeah. it's like going to church, and I never really liked going to church. So. <laughs> yeah, we me and Taylor are going through the Purge movies right now. Oh God! Why? <laughs> the same reason me and you were talking about God's not dead, but this was a, I, okay. I had a similar feeling uh, that I do with those, where it's like, okay, this is clearly just this thing. Like this is all a, a a device to watch people get murdered, and God's not dead was just a device to. Well, actually, it was for. So at the end, the concert is Newsboys, which is. A, a pretty popular Christian band from the nineties hmm. and the two thousands. Um, okay. I assume they were of note somewhere. They were, they had a God's not dead tour that they were kicking off to oh. coincide with this movie. So similar to like Willy Wonka and the chocolate factory 
which was made just to sell candy bars. This mm. movie was made to kick off the tour, which is why they wanted to do that whole social media engagement of, oh, go out and tweet. So one, wow. we can make movie <laughs> money on the movie, but also so we can get people into the tour, the, the concerts. Cause you watch, there's like, there's, um, posters for the, the newsboys all over the place. That's yeah, the, I noticed that that was in in uh, Josh's in dorm room. Yeah, there was a poster for the God's Not Dead tour. I'm like, well, that's a coincidence. Yeah, considering yeah. what's going on in your life right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another one of God's miracles, I guess. He works in mysterious ways. I, I gotta assume Kevin Sorbo saw that poster somewhere and was like, "All right, this is the problem. We got a movie, <laughs> <laughs> guys. We got a movie." We get the newsboys in. They have a concert at the end. We have a Muslim girl who gets the crap beaten out of her. There but it turns out she was Christian the whole time. We got me. I'm an atheist. Now I'm I'm an actor, so I can play that kind of despicable monster. <laughs> and uh <laughs> then we have this other man. He's a businessman. He's also an atheist. He's evil. And there's this lady who's an evil atheist blogger. Then she gets cancer and now she's a Christian. Like I that's what I think it was. I think it was just like, okay, let's have a character who's an atheist. Okay, she'll become a Christian. He'll die and he'll remain an atheist. They had, like, they had journeys for characters. No one becomes an atheist in this movie. Oh, no, no, you, yeah. The, and it's interesting the, the professions all three of the atheists had. I mean, including the Muslim father. They're kind of all things Christians can be afraid of. You know, teaching, yeah. like, a, uh, higher education teachers is always kind of a, a threat to, to yeah. your students or whatever. Um, the businessman is just kind of an evil person. Like he even accepts it. He's in this kind movie. of a monster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he's then away until tomorrow. the, the leftist, uh, reporter, like there's, there's just no nuance to any of these characters. They're just so stereotypical of what lazy Christians are afraid of. Yeah. I feel like I'm really make a lot of people mad, but I, it, it's, that's okay. <laughs> like, I don't know. Probably. It's, that's why I'm being a little more neutral. I'm trying to be a little more, <laughs> I'm trying to be a little more neutral here. But yeah, cause this movie didn't like, this movie didn't offend any sensibilities of mine, religious or otherwise. It was just kind of a boring piece of crap. <laughs> like, yeah. I, it's like, uh, I don't know, like any just, I mean, it was particularly terrible because of how badly it was made and just like technical stuff. I noticed like the, the video message from uh, the Duck Dynasty guy at the end. I'm like, there's no way that would be on any screen. It's very clearly like <laughs> picture in picture effect. Yeah, yeah. I could do that effect. Yeah. <laughs> I think it looked maybe a little bit better. <laughs> like maybe. Yeah, yeah. But it's just stuff like that. It's like, and, and the slides, Josh Wheaton's slides and, um, just, yeah, just technical stuff like that was so off. Yeah and weird but i was like this it, it i mean a lot of movies are like that no matter how big the budget is but surely even christians know how phones work and how powerpoints work <laughs> they're, they're they're this movie wasn't made by the amish like they, people have iphones if they're if they go to church like, i'm sure the pure Flix executives have facebook like they know what these things are and uh, well <laughs> th this this probably would have the story probably would have like blown up. I mean, like in the world of the film, like they probably would have gotten more media attention. Like this student takes on this teacher, like Buzzfeed would have got on or whatever. But I think what would have happened is a lot of the students who were in the class would have complained that their time was being wasted and their tuition was being wasted. Yeah. Oh by, yeah, for by sure. This little spat between this professor and this kid. The professor would probably get uh, a talking to, and then he'd drop it. Yeah. Because you can't hinge. I don't think you can hinge 30% of someone's grade on writing God's Not Dead on a piece of paper. And I think that's what he was doing. <laughs> so. Yeah. It, this, yeah. This is bad. And then the end within the class. So he gives his three presentations and he asks the class, okay, do you guys think God is dead or God's not dead? And everyone stands up like Spartacus and says, God's not dead. Oh, and, it, that was so funny. <laughs> And it was just like, this is not, that? this is not reality. This is not how any of this would go down, especially oh. based on what you show that he says. He doesn't say anything of substance. And absolutely not. <laughs> it's just like he, they, they set up a, a decent, uh, back and forth between him and the teacher of like the teacher making a point and him countering the logic of the original point. 
But that, that's not evidence. That's just them talking to each other. You know, like the, the, the one thing, like with Stephen Hawking was like one of the few things the teacher's like, well, Stephen Hawking thinks this. He's a smart guy. And he's like, well, another guy disagrees with that, Stephen yeah, Hawking. Yeah, that's not a fact. That doesn't, that doesn't make it a fact. It, yeah. No, that's something. This movie is just people quoting theories at each other. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> theories or scientific theories. Yeah. And it's, it's, oh man, it's really bad. Like for me, the, the offensive part is I think there is value in, you know, being a Christian. And this movie. Oh, absolutely. Does not represent that in any aspect. It, it is yeah. this, this terrible picture of what Christianity is or should be. And it's yeah. so offensive to me because there is no reason for it to be this way. They even say in the beginning, the pastor is talking to Josh Wheaton. He's like, what if this is the only time these students are going to hear the message of Christ? You gotta yeah, treat this that... with respect. And it's like, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> like, I think that was, that was the only line that really kind of irked me. Cause I, I was like, that's their choice. Yeah. <laughs> if they want to come talk to you about Jesus, they're welcome to do that. Well, like for like, me, the, the, I, the, the, I, I was, <laughs> I was thinking like, okay, use that same logic to people watching this movie. Like there is, uh, yeah, that's probably. you know, like there's no, there's no respect given to, to someone who doesn't believe the same thing. And it's like, how many people who disagree saw this movie? And if they would have given them respect, had a little bit more of a conversation attached to it, other than this movie is dumb, <laughs> you know, like that should not be the conversation. Yeah. It's, it's too, it's too s simple minded of an argument and too many, too much of a straw man argument. Yeah. Like, there, never once are you supposed to, by what the professor is saying. Never once are you supposed to buy what any atheist character is saying or any non-Christian character is saying. They are only presented as evil or wrong. <laughs> and, and that's just, you know, whether they, they beat up their daughter and throw them out, which, you know, there have been instances of that happening. There are some yeah. religious extremists, but let's not pretend like there aren't any Christian extremists yeah, who exactly. would do the same thing or worse. Yeah. It's just, you like know, how many, think, how many stories have you ever heard about? Uh, someone coming out of the closet and getting kicked out of their family because the family's Christian, right? Like, uh, is that? Yeah, or just, or yeah, or full on excommunication. Like, it's it yeah. happens in yeah. every religion all over the place. Yeah. No, it's it's yeah, it's uh, this movie. It, it, it's really upsetting. <laughs> this, yeah, this movie didn't. Uh, this movie didn't build any bridges. I don't think. No. <laughs> it, like, like it. Not, like it probably. It, not this, like this Black was Panther did. Probably supposed to be. Well, yeah, <laughs> that was great. When the two cartoons were punching each other, <laughs> I really felt favorite. it. <laughs> my favorite scene in the movie when I, when I looked at a PS2 game. Oh man, Black Panther that... was a good movie. <laughs> Black Panther was a good movie. No, it, I, it it was an okay movie. It was it was just a pretty fine. good movie. It was just fine. okay. Well, let's not get in a Black Panther <laughs> tangent. You know what? You you continue to infuriate your audience. I I'm, will. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to stay on the good side here. <laughs> I'm going to say it was a very good movie. Powerful film. So Love the it. most important movie, second only to God's Not Dead. Uh, well, you forget Death Note 2017. Oh. No, actually, Power Rangers 2017. That's my that's my thing. <laughs> that's that's my one? meme. I forgot. You've given up on Dude, Bright? You know, <laughs> Bright, Bright isn't as... The thing about my Power Rangers joke, I legitimately really like that movie. <laughs> That's the problem. Like Bright, I can make fun of like, haha, Bright's a powerful allegory for race relations. I legitimately enjoyed Power Rangers. So I, I still haven't seen it. I'm going to make a video about it like in the future sometime. I'm going to make like a, a, like not like a over the top dramatic video essay, but just kind of a like, I know this is a joke I tell a lot and it's, it's something I pepper into my videos now. It's kind of like mentioning Power Rangers, like with the Oscars movies or whatever. Mm. But yeah, with, with, I'm just gonna be like, I just kind of like this movie. Here's why. And I think, I think you should go yeah. back and just do all of the Power Ranger movies from the beginning. Oh God, no. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I used to, this is a nostalgic story, at my uh, aunt's house when we would go there, she had a VHS copy of the original, the one with Ivan Ooze, and mm. me and my sister would watch that over and over and over again. I loved that movie as a kid, and I've always wanted to rewatch it, like as an adult, because I never have. I think, so I want to hunt down a uh, someday. I think you mispronounce Apocalypse. Mm. From, uh, Maybe. 
X Men. They were they're they, very similar. Yeah. Performance. <laughs> performance. <laughs> visual. <laughs> oh man. All right. Time. Well, anything anyway. else about God's Not Dead? Any other? Uh, don't watch it. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely it's not, not worth it. it. Yeah. If you're curious about it, um, it's it's not gonna be. I don't think it's bad enough to be like entertainingly funny bad. No. It's just really boring. I if think, you're a Christian, maybe you'll like it. Maybe you probably I hope won't. not. If, if uh, you're a Christian you're, and you like it, you need to re examine what you believe. Or just, you know, don't I guess, you know, just have some nuance. I trust real Christians to have like I I don't mean real Christians in terms of like I'm telling you how I mean like real people, not like fictional characters. Yeah, yeah. I trust real life Christians. Uh, to be able to, to have some nuance and some intelligence in their lives, yeah. like all of them. Yeah. And, uh, the ones I know certainly do. The ones I know, they definitely are kind and wonderful people, um, because of their religion and independently of it. And this is, this is, this movie is not going to encourage that kind of Christianity that I think is the best example of it that I think makes people better and makes people happier and more secure, which is what religion is for. And this this movie is not an advertisement for religion. It's kind of like a hate ad against it un- unintentionally. Yeah, no, I I agree with you very much on that. Like, I don't think this is not good. This is complete propaganda. Like, God's not good. <laughs> Movie's not good. I yeah. shouldn't say God's not good. You have that too clean. That could be taken out of context now. <laughs> Movie's not good. That's what I'm calling it now. God's oh. not dead. More like I'm gonna he's not good. Cut together a super cut that just is on a loop of you saying, oh. I laugh so hard God's at the cancer not- lady and God is not good. <laughs> I've ruined myself here. I was worried I was going to say something dumb in the Wonder Woman ep- or the Suicide Squad episode and we got on the Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can still talk about Black Panther if you want to talk about race. Next stuff. week, Black Panther. We're only talking about race issues. We're we're the most most qualified. To, to me, a second year university <laughs> film student, and you. <laughs> oh man, it's perfect. Who better, honestly? Yeah, people. I don't think there's like, enough white guys' opinions it. on Black Panther. No, on movies in general. That's true. Just on movies in general. That's true. We need more YouTube channels. With white people talking about movies. <laughs> white men. Not, no women. No women, please. Oh, yeah, Just men. No. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> don't, don't, no, there's no there's <laughs> thing for the compilation. <laughs> oh, man. Well, if people want to find out more about your bigoted beliefs, how can they do that? <laughs> oh, God. Don't give me that intro. <laughs> uh, yeah, my YouTube channel is just my name, Ross McIntyre. I haven't uploaded in a while, but I'm probably going to soon. I have a bunch of projects on the way, but school has been nuts. Uh, hopefully the summer will give me some more spare time. And I have, uh, you were saying you're, another flash. you're working on an anti transgender video, right? Was that? Oh, God. No, <laughs> God, no. Don't even joke about that. <laughs> I'll get torn apart. I am not. That is not the focus of my channel. The the words spoken by Alan on this podcast do not reflect the views or opinions of Ross <laughs> McIntyre, Ross McIntyre Associates affiliates. Just the words that he spoke anyway, himself. Uh, yeah, we have enough of those yeah, to take him and, down. Uh, cancer lady is hilarious because it's about her you know pain. it's about time atheists get taken down a notch. They've had it too good for too it's long. About- you know, honestly, though, after the new whole Ricky Gervais thing, I'm like, you know what? Maybe they sh- should. <laughs> Maybe I, atheists should shut up a little bit. I don't know what that, like, what they do. Oh, he's just being annoying on Twitter, and oh. like, he's he's uh, his whole edgy atheist thing is is kind of obnoxious. But it's more of a him in general, like trying to be offensive and edgy, and it not really working. And then he kind of goes to the atheist thing as like, a, like remember that atheist photo shoot he did? You yeah. that? Have you ever seen that picture? He's on like a cross, but the cross is like a mic stand and he has atheist painted across his chest and he's like, gotcha. Jesus, it's really sad. Look it up. It's pretty funny. Like you could probably get a laugh out of it, Yeah. but it, that's like the level of embarrassing atheism that I, that I would compare to this level of embarrassing Christianity is this movie. I don't think <laughs> like, I would want shut- Ricky Gervais to be a spokesperson for anything that I believed in. Uh, no, definitely not. But to, to, to the people who made this movie to this movie, uh, I just say, shut up. I yes. don't care. Yes, please. My final words, shut up. I don't care. So what are we doing the sequel? That's what I was wondering. What do you want to do the next one? I'm down. Honestly, I, I can watch it. And uh, I mean, we've gotten all the like our, our religious opinions out of the way. So next time we can just complain about the movie. <laughs> I honestly don't know. 
how it can get worse. So, so I, maybe it'll be a better. I, yeah, I think actually the second one is a better, a better made movie. I don't know if it's better. I'm optimistic. Better, uh, theology, uh, it's, I don't know if it's theology is any better or the message it's trying to put out is any better, but I think it's more well, focused it, of a, a movie. high bar like God's not dead. <laughs> you know, how do you beat that? <laughs> well, thanks for coming on. I appreciate your perspective on this awful, awful movie. It was a lot of oh, fun. Oh, absolutely. Always happy to contribute an awful opinion about an awful movie. <laughs> but, uh, we will be back with, uh, oh, the purge election year. That should be our next, next, uh, episode coming out. Me and Taylor.